And we're back with some more oxygen not included and a quick tutorial on food and infinite food storage. Now there was a bunch of changes made a few months ago to food storage and it kind of threw off all the infinite food storage techniques we've been using up until now. It used to be you could dump food in a vacuum and it stayed fresh indefinitely. However, that is no longer the case. Now just the quickest way to go over this is this here is just a dump, bunch of meal ice dumped into oxygen, not refrigerated, not anything. This is just a normal average room. And you'll notice under here it's got unrefrigerated minus 9%, normal atmosphere minus 4. This means it loses 13% of its freshness every cycle between the two of those combined. However, we can combat that normal atmosphere debuff by putting it in carbon dioxide. At which point the sterile atmosphere, the minus 4 from the sterile atmosphere is gone and we've just got the minus 9 from unrefrigerated. Same thing in hydrogen and it's still the same thing in a vacuum still classified as a sterile atmosphere. However, that minus nine from unrefrigerated is, uh, well, it's a little bit problematic. That means in the levels, 11 cycles, it's still gonna go off. So that's where refrigerators come in now. Now, refrigerator, if you'll notice down here, has brought this down to minus three. It used to be minus nine, and now refrigerated makes it a minus three. However, the atmosphere it's in does count. So you can still see that minus four from the normal atmosphere. So that means that you're getting a minus seven just because you've got it in oxygen. Get that exact same fridge, stick it in some carbon dioxide, now you're in a sterile atmosphere and refrigeration has reduced it to minus three. You've actually doubled the, life, the, the lifespan of your food just by sticking it in carbon dioxide or hydrogen. Carbon dioxide, much easier to be honest. Oh, also chlorine works as well, but we'll, we'll have more on that later. And vacuum also works as well. However, the fridge does generate just a little bit of heat. You know what? It might actually be okay in vacuum. I can see its temperature is 20.7, the same as the rest of them, but I don't usually play around with fridges in vacuum. There has been a change made to fridges. It used to be they took 120 watts consistently. Now they have a low power mode of 20 watts. Every time you put food in them, they jack up to 120, but once they've reduced the temperature down low enough to uh, one degree, they switch back to doing the 20 watts. So they're no longer the massive power hogs they used to be, and they pretty much make up a good part of uh, your early game food storage. In fact, when it comes to early game food storage, you usually dig a CO2 pit, put some refrigerators in it, and dump your food in that early game. Until you get your hands on some later game tech, which allows you to get to infinite storage. Now, infinite storage is a little bit different in that. Uh, where is it? We'll check over here. Oh, wait, that's just refrigerated. This one's probably a better bet. We'll go with deep freeze. So this is deep frozen. If the temperature goes below minus 18, greatly prolongs shelf life. And by greatly prolongs, I mean, so long as you keep it in a sterile atmosphere and have it deep frozen, 0% change per cycle. And you can keep them indefinitely. However, that minus 18 is a little bit uh, flexible, let's just say. In here, we are actually working with chlorine gas, and that chlorine gas is reduced to minus 31. And if we check the meal life itself, meal lice itself the meal lice is only minus six. The meal lice is not actually frozen to minus 18. Therefore, why is it saying it's deep frozen? That's with the way this works. If the food itself is surrounded by a gas that's minus 18, it goes, cool, I'm deep frozen. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but eventually my temperature will equalize that with the gas and I'll be deep frozen. So it just assumes that it's going to get there in the end. However, if the gas was to go uh, uh, below minus 18, or actually sorry, above minus 18 to minus 17, it will immediately go, oh wait, I'm not deep frozen anymore. We're, we're not going to make it. So you got to be careful that you're not going to put it in a gas that's eventually going to go back up above the frozen temperature. Now over here though, we have no such gas. This is in a vacuum. So if you'll check here, it's currently refrigerated, but that it's a, that's only minus 3% and it's in a sterile atmosphere. But you'll notice here, this is still going down in temperature. That's because it's stuck on top of a metal tile, an aluminum tile in this instance, and that aluminum tile is nicely chilled. So if you leave that food there long enough, it will actually go down to minus 18, at which point this will be deep frozen. In fact, let's just skip this forward a bit. Might take a minute. All right, we're seven, minus 17.9. Sterile atmosphere, refrigerated, let's let it go on a bit, and deep frozen. That's because the food eventually, physically itself, went down below minus 18. Uh, this stuff down here, how's it doing? Ah, that's actually deep frozen now as well in terms of uh, the body temperature. So you have two choices in how you free, free refrigerate your food or deep freeze your food. Either one, deep freeze the, the meal lice down itself or whatever food you're using, or two, make sure that the gas is always going to be below minus 18. What we're using for these is thermoregulators. The reason being, you don't really need to chill an awful lot of stuff, and air, this is just the earliest way you're going to get to deep frozen. Otherwise, you're stuck using aqua tuners and ethanol, which can be a little bit trickier to get your hands on. These, you get access to them earlier, you only need to run them for a little bit. They're actually quite cheap on power. They're 240 watts, and while they're not as power efficient in terms of how much chill you get out of them, you don't care. 
Plus, they generate so little heat, you can usually get away with dumping them in a nearby cold biome or even just putting them in some nearby water and then maybe throw in some ice later on. It's just easy to get these up and running quickly. You don't need to hold out for steam turbines. I usually do, and I get by on fridges and carbon dioxide until then. But if you desperately want to get them up quickly, you can usually just dump them into your water supply, or dump a thermal aqua tuner into your water supply and get by that way. This will allow you to get up infinite food storage. However, there's two other, well, there's two main methods of food storage as well that go on top of that. And it's not to do with how you cool them or freeze them. These are the two main methods of cooling or freezing. It's to do with how you set them up to avoid infinite rooting loops. This is all to do with food that you find outside of your base and food in the wild. So in this instance, we're going to look at, say, whatever your dupes drops some meal ice on the ground, and you want to get that meal ice back into cold storage because, you know, it's a waste to leave it out there. It's just going to rot. So your, your first instinct is going to be, say, grab your... Uh, your conveyor loader and switch that to allow manual use. So we set this to allow manual use, we have set it to allow meal lice, and then we're going to throw down a duplicate here, we'll just spawn one in, and make him go grab that meal lice and bring it over. Excellent. However, we have a problem. You've now just caused an infinite rooting loop because they're going to keep chucking it back and forwards. This is not what you want. So you're kind of stuck in this weird limbo where you can't drag food manually with your duplicates back to this storage area. There's stuff you can try doing with one-way doors, but it gets complicated. Your best bet in this instance is to maybe do something like this. Say you open this door here, and then you have two options. Option one, make a sweepy dock. Have the sweepy go in and sweep up any food that's there. It'll bring it back to here, and then you can use an automation system to, well, pull them out, dump them into a conveyor loader, and have that conveyor loader whisk it back to your food storage. That way, any food that ends up in your mess hall will end up automatically getting conveyed back. Another option is to put in auto sweepers. Now you cannot put an auto sweeper in your actual hall itself. Well, oh, no, is it the conveyor loader? Sorry, wrong one. Yes, conveyor loader. A conveyor loader is classified as industrial machinery. So while that's in there, yeah, you've got a problem. So what you can do is you can put the auto sweepers in there, but maybe put the conveyor loader on the other side of the a pneumatic door. Auto sweepers can reach through pneumatic doors. That way they can pick it up, dump it into the loader and have that twist back. Now, they are not my preferred methods, but they do work quite well. Your next option is to actually allow the manual use one, the one we covered uh, originally. Have the duplicates, bring it back to the conveyor loader. They're going to, that's going to go along there and get chopped off in here. However, this comes with its own set of downsides. The problem with this one is your duplicates can't access the food in here. They used to be able to hop up on ladders and get in here, but you can no longer access, they can no longer access food diagonally through these things anymore. So what you end up having to do is making yourself a sort of a temporary storage. So we'll say set this to one kilo. And then what we'll do is we'll just say, yep, yeah, put in one kilo of meal lice. And boom. This acts as an intermediate storage. When the duplicates need some food, they'll come along and grab it out of this fridge and go eat. And then what we've done here is we're going to set this to level five. We're going to set this to level four. Now, what numbers you use will depend on how you set up your system. You might want to set it to level eight if you think a uh, high priority would be better. But whatever you set that to, you want to make sure the fridge is one higher. Or sorry, yeah, one higher. That way the fridge gets filled first. If there's any leftovers, it will get put into the uh, conveyor loader. So if we say spawn in some f more food over here, they'll go grab it and dump it into that section. And because we only have one kilo in here, it's not likely to go off. More than likely the dupes will come along and take, take it and they'll eat their way through it. This is very convenient. Well, I prefer this method because it means it just allows your duplicates to clean up any messes they make. As well as that, you can set this to a few other things that is really, really handy. For example, do you have wild pinch of pepper nuts growing on your map? They can get automatic, when they're harvested, they'll automatically be brought here and dumped into internet storage. Same with any wild sleet wheat, any wild plants you've got growing around the map, you can make sure that when they are harvested, they're brought back here. Otherwise, when you're harvesting your foods, it's a little bit difficult to get them into these uh, conveyor loaders. You see, over here, this can grab the foods out of there and chuck them into your electric grill. That's only your raw food, so you're going to have to need to arrange your farms so that that can uh, so that all the food is automatically brought back to this location, which is going to be a problem if you're going to end up with another infinite rooting loop. So this method allows you to just put these down, have all the food dumped into them, and the only thing that can access this area is the auto sweepers. Plus sides makes it really easy to bring all your food into one location and all your cooking ingredients. Downsides you can really only access it with the amount of auto supers that can access it from these directions. A couple of other things you can do though is you can access it diagonally and you can access it from different angles. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but I do find this the preferred method for dealing with the long frozen foods. Last but not least, we have berry sludge. Berry sludge is very unique. It doesn't go off. 
at all. There's just no way to make it go off. Uh, in fact, let's just uh, dump it in some polluted water. Doesn't care. Just stays there. Not a bother. Doesn't care at all. Let's dump it in some magma. Still doesn't care. There you go. Actually, I wonder do mealwood consider this uh, a sterile environment? So it turns out meal lice consider this a normal atmosphere. Well, you live and you learn. Had no idea. I would have thought, you know... Well, okay, it would have incinerated it, but uh, at least it'd be t considered sterile. I can't imagine any germs surviving there. Here is a rather messy storage base we made earlier. Now, in this one here, you'll notice this conveyor loader here can access this frozen storage, or deep freeze. And then that also feeds all of those raw materials to your electric grill and your micro musher. At the same time, I've got another one down here that can access it that's feeding down to a gas range, and also the pinch of peppernuts can be fed into the tea station. So there is flexibility on this. However, one mistake I did make here, because this was made shortly after the, the release was, I put metal tiles on the side, I did not put them below. So you'll notice there on some of these, uh, that's deep frozen, but let's actually check the properties. Okay, you're minus 24. Uh, bristleberry, yeah, this bristleberry is 19.3 C. So this has not been chilled at all, but because it's deep frozen, it hasn't gone off. However, if the temperature fluctuates too wildly, which can potentially happen with this, because we have so much food in there, how much have we got? Yeah, we got millions of calories. So what's happened is sometimes you'll end up with a big influx of food, the gas has kind of changed temperature a bit too much. I would definitely advise you to put a metal tile beneath your foods if I was doing this all over again. Uh, as well as that, for your gas pipes, the ones that right here at the end, you want to use radiant ones to transfer the temperature into the materials. I would heavily recommend you hold out for steel. Heavily recommend that you use steel for this. This stuff is incredibly cheap in terms of uh, how much material it takes. It's 25 materials to make each pipe segment. You're only going to need three, four tops. That's one batch of steel will get you this. Hell, you could probably dismantle some things on the map made of steel that you get through this. Now, the reason for that is, so when it comes to ventilation, steel is just the best. Everything else that's in here is an ore. So you see there's copper, aluminum ore, cobalt. Yeah, these are ores. Ores have terrible thermal conductivity. It's just the way the game is designed. Radiant pipes, radiant gas pipes are all made out of ores. But steel is one of those things that transcends those and, can be, and anything that can be made with ore can also be made with steel. That's why steel is the best one. So go with steel if you've got it. Also, the tiles to put them on, uh, gold is not the best. What you want is something with great specific heat capacity. That's the most important bit. So the higher the specific heat capacity, in that instance, it would be aluminum. And I think iron and copper come second somewhere along those lines. You have to double check yourself. But basically, gold is probably the worst thing. Like I said, I designed this about the time it came out and I've learned a few things since. But it has served me well. And as you'll notice, there's 36 million calories. So it's not like it's uh, working too badly. Over here, you'll see we've got one fridge that's got one... 100 kilos of berry sludge and the other one over here just has one kilo or set to three kilos of pepper bread that's just so all the duplicates have enough food and can use it whenever they want and you'll notice that there's no leftover food oh i spoke too soon who left the pepper bread there here comes one of our duplicates now to take care of that dear lord meridian mm. well yes that means we don't end up with any bread being left lying about the place they instead bring it all back here and boom you can see it gets sent into that section as well as that, any foods to do with anything we harvest, for example, these are all where the hatch eggs uh, evolve. All the meat gets dumped from there directly into either the grill directly itself or into one of these conveyor loaders, which sends it down into frozen storage. We even have a conveyor rail coming all the way from up here from our farms. We don't need this. The duplicates could carry it all down themselves. We could actually allow them to do it that way. And it's very handy that that's the thing. But having them automatically brought down does save on labor. So you can mix and match however you feel fit. And that covers most of food storage. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.